Forbidden Origins Episode 3 Were We Created? In the previous episode, we discovered the endeavors of our government based space programs, along with the alien question. We learned about the United States Space Force and the objectives of the multinational solar system exploration initiative known as the Artemis Accords. In this episode, we'll embark on a journey into the realm of further possibility as we entertain the idea of our potential exoplanetary origins. I do warn you though, some of this content may lead you along a path of astonishment and awe, challenging the constructs of your beliefs. Hi, I'm Dominic Shinarjanari, and I invite you to join me as we look into the possible extraterrestrial origins of the human race in this very special third episode of Forbidden Origins. Okay, you are courageous enough to follow me as we looked into the possibility of extraterrestrial beings and what that means to us here on planet Earth. So get your GMO free popcorn ready, because once again, I'm asking you to take a leap of faith with me in this eye-opening episode. We've recently discovered our current space programs are beginning to fund studies into the fields of astrobiology and the ramifications and effects these revelations will have on humanity. So it's not completely out of the question to hypothesize the concept of some type of intervention when it comes to our origins. There are three main concepts for the origins of who we are and where we come from. Though there may be other possibilities, three main concepts continue to shine the strongest. Let me share them with you. Number one is the modern day science perspective in which we evolved from bacteria over millions of years arriving here on planet Earth, adapting into the complex human form that we take right now. Number two, we are the result of some type of intervention in that we were created or our genes were intelligently aggregated to form our miraculous human body. And number three is the simulation hypothesis in which we are existing and living in a quantum level simulation like the parameters of the popular video game The Sims. I understand these can be really confronting ideas to be faced with, especially the idea of being part of some grand video game simulation. But before your mind starts reeling, take a deep breath in and let it out. Because regardless of which concept rings true, you and your existence are special. And the fact that you are watching this presentation right here, right now, is a testimony to the inner work you are doing to reach a higher state of awareness and understanding. So it doesn't matter which idea you believe, because that is your free will to decide. I'm simply sharing alternative perspectives to the mainstream sources. We've already been fed the modern day science framework of evolution theory, which dominates our universities and classrooms. And we could take up an entire episode alone on the simulation hypothesis. In this episode, I'd like to take a look at the second potential of who we are and where we come from. Are we the result of some type of intervention? My reason for exploring this idea comes down to new discoveries that are being revealed, along with the law and scriptures that were passed down to us from our ancient ancestors. The concept of being created by a higher source of power has its roots set in world religion, amongst other schools of philosophy and esoteric wisdom teaching. But before you swipe away from this video thinking it's some push towards creationism, I can assure you that is not my intention. And to avoid any religious implications, I'll refer to our civilization timeline as BCE, before Common Era, and CE Common Era. The purpose of this series is to evaluate alternative possibilities to the current scientific paradigm, to shed light on information that you may not have considered or known. And I want you to know something. The idea of some type of intervention may not be as far-fetched as you think. As this one subject could span over many episodes, I'll focus on some of the main cultures and epochs of time to keep this presentation on track. Our ancient ancestors evolved 
from the ancient Anatolian civilization of Gobekli Tepe to the ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, the Indus Valley civilizations, Australian Aboriginals, the ancient Greeks and Romans, all the way down to the Chinese dynasties, the Mayans, Incas, Aztecs, and the Native American cultures. All of these civilizations had as their core belief the concept of their very existence given to them by forces and entities that were not from this realm. To them, they were given life by those who from the heavens came, or by forces that shift in and out of our dimensional reality. Let's start at one of the current oldest sites we know so far on Earth, Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe is an archaeological site in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey that dates back 12,000 BCE, featuring circles of massive T-shaped stone pillars, which are currently the world's oldest known megaliths. These megalithic pillars feature intricate carvings of animals, along with totems of humanoid figures. The engineering of these pillars is so incredible, and the fact that a prehistory culture could have lifted up 10 ton stones and placed them atop a foundation strong enough to hold them in place is in itself an incredible feat. Apart from Gobekli Tepe being the oldest cultivated site we know of, what makes all of this so significant in our quest for the forbidden origins of humanity? Well, Gobekli Tepe is believed to be of a social or ritual destination. According to the site discoverer and excavator Klaus Schmidt, no fire pits were found, no food scraps. There is also speculation that the site has astronomical ties to the gods. The interesting fact about Gobekli Tepe is, majority of the area is yet to be excavated, and it's been discovered that this site has deeper layers that may unlock further mysteries to the ever-extending timeline of our civilization. Things just seem to be getting older, and academia seem to be struggling to keep up. I've added a link to Gobekli Tepe in the description. As we move along the timeline, we arrive at an era and civilization we are more familiar with. Ancient Egypt. According to Wikipedia, Ancient Egypt was a civilization of ancient North Africa, concentrated along the lower reaches of the Nile River, situated in the place that is now the country Egypt. Ancient Egyptian civilization followed prehistoric Egypt and coalesced around 3100 BCE, according to the conventional Egyptian chronology. Ancient Egypt is steeped in mystery and speculation. We have one narrative from the scientific establishment that the Egyptian civilization is roughly 5,000 years old, that the pyramids and other colossal structures of Egypt are mainly considered to be tombs of the pharaohs. Here are some intriguing facts that surround Egypt and the Great Pyramid of Giza. 1. No individual, group or organisation understands how the Great Pyramid was built. 2. A vast majority of the Giza Plateau is yet to be excavated. 3. The dating of ancient Egypt is continuously moving further back in time. 4. Scientists are still discovering chambers deep inside the Great Pyramid. 5. No mummies have ever been found in any Egyptian pyramids. 6. The following civilizations added additional works to the previously built structures, including the Sphinx. 7. Ancient scriptures and artwork depict interventions by celestial beings from the cosmos. According to a book by Dr. Robert Schott titled Origins of the Sphinx, Celestial Guardian of the pre pharaonic Civilization, the Great Sphinx is a lot older than what the field of Egyptology assures us. And Dr. Schock has some compelling evidence to back it up. Quote, to make a long story short, I came to the conclusion that the oldest portions of the Great Sphinx, what I refer to as the core body, must date back to an earlier period, at least 5000 BCE. And my latest research now points to the end of the last ice age, circa 10,000 BCE. A time when the climate was very different and included more rain. 
Just so you know, Dr. Robert Schock is an anthropologist, a geophysicist and a geologist, with accolades as an honorary professor and the director of the Institute for the Study of the Origins of Civilization. So as you can see, Dr. Schock is the real deal when it comes to the verified information on this subject. But there are many other specialists in this field that we'll never hear about that offer an alternative perspective to the current paradigm of ancient Egypt. Be sure to research the works of the following individuals. Graham Hancock, Robert Bouval and Christopher Dunn. I've inserted a link in the description to Dr. Robert Schock and his work. After researching ancient Egypt and listening to both sides of the conversation, it seems like modern day Egyptology is as much of a theory as any other theory. You may have heard of the ancient alien theory which suggests there was an intervention between humans and the gods that activated civilization. Though I'm not suggesting or subscribing absolutely to any one of these theories, there certainly are valid points to both of them. And if there were a joint effort for these theories to merge and unite, akin to the idea of merging science and religion, well, we would see tremendous breakthroughs in the understanding of our past. You may have heard of the Sumerian civilization of Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq. According to Wikipedia, Sumer is the earliest known civilization in the historical region of southern Mesopotamia, now southern Iraq, emerging during the early Bronze Age between the 6th and 5th millennium BCE. Living along the valleys of the Tigris and Euphrates, Sumerian farmers grew an abundance of grain and other crops, the surplus from which enabled them to form urban settlements. Prehistoric proto-writing dates back before 3000 BCE. When we look at the Sumerians and Mesopotamian creation stories, they talk about gods from the skies descending to earth, bioengineering a form of humanity that was already here, creating a developed more modern form of humans. They were not specific as to where exactly they engineered their humans, but what I extracted from the ancient Sumerian texts was that these gods interacted in multiple realms, including the cosmos, the underworld, and beneath the ocean. What if the tales from the Old Testament and other ancient writings, such as those from Sumer, Babylon, Egypt, and ancient Greece, were not myths or allegories, but accounts of actual historical events? Author Zechariah Sitchin known for his ability to read ancient Sumerian and Akkadian clay tablets, took the words of our most ancient ancestors as fact, and through decades of meticulous research, showed that they revealed a coherent narrative about the true origins of humanity and civilization. Of course, Sitchin's work drew both widespread interest and heavy criticism. In his book, The Twelfth Planet, he detailed how humanity arose after the arrival of the Anunnaki, those who from the heavens came. They were alien gods who created modern man in their own image and imparted gifts of civilization and knowledge. I've inserted a link into the description to the work of Zechariah Sitchin. As we voyage further towards the east in our discovery of Earth's ancient civilizations, a mention must be given to India and the civilizations of the Indus Valley. According to the Vedic texts, they believe the universe was created by the creator god Brahma, who made the universe out of himself. After Brahma created the world, it's the power of Vishnu which preserves the world and human beings. As part of the cycle of birth, life and death, it's Shiva who will ultimately destroy the universe in order for Brahma to start the process of creation all over again. In Hinduism, the universe is millions of years old. According to the Hindu faith, the universe we live in is not the first or indeed the last universe. I find this all quite fascinating, especially since we once again see the theme of some type of intervention between 
with the ancient civilizations. And according to the Vedic scriptures, time is not linear. Instead, there are eternal cycles with universes being created, existing and dying, followed by the next cycle of reincarnation, existence, and eventually death. There is no beginning and no end. This is mirrored in the Hindu's belief in reincarnation. These cycles of time are called yugas. The most stunning aspect of this 26,000 year complete cycle is the fact that we are living right now in the most troubling of eras, as it's known as the Kali Yuga. Have a look at the parameters of this Kali Yuga cycle of time we are currently experiencing in our reality, where it's stipulated humanity can barely perceive anything outside of gross materialism. The Kali Yuga is the fourth and present age of the world cycle of yugas, or ages. It's also the end of the four ages that comprise a cycle and is often referred to as the Dark Age. In Hindu belief, the Kali Yuga leads to the destruction of the world and then the creation of a new cycle of four yugas. The Kali Yuga is filled with extremes, war and conflict. The civilization degenerates spiritually throughout this yuga as people drift further away from the divine. At the end of the Kali Yuga, Hindus believe that Lord Shiva will come in the form of Lord Kalki to punish and cleanse the world, which will have devolved to the point of being incapable of enlightenment. The resulting transformation and recreation of the universe is the start of a new cycle of Yugas. I've inserted a link to the Yugas and the Hindu faith in the description. I can imagine you must be wondering, how does all this have any relevance to do with who we are and where we come from? This could all just be considered nonsensical, conjecture even. Well, many great thinkers have said, if you want to know where you are headed, look at where you have come from. It's not about taking sides in this almost limitless debate of who we really are and where we come from. The establishment scientists have had their way for a very, very long time, and we still are yet to see any promising answers regarding our true origins from the establishment. Our religious texts have been passed down through generations and have undergone rigorous rewrites and edits, leaving their final construct but a mere echo of their former glory. It's with this review of both sides we need to take a moment to analyse and revisit the ancient texts and the law of our ancestors with a fresh set of eyes. And as time goes on, newer discoveries are being made, more ancient texts are being transcribed, and more of us are enlightened to the new human story that is being written before our eyes. Let's take this opportunity to have a look at the Mesoamerican civilization of the Mayans, according to their sacred creation myth text called the Popolva. According to Wikipedia, the Popolva is a text recounting the mythology and history of the Quiche people, one of the Mayan peoples who inhabited the Guatemalan highlands, Mexican Chiapas, Campeche and Quintana Roo states. The Popolva is a foundational sacred narrative of the Quiche people from long before the Spanish conquest of Mexico. It includes the Mayan creation myth and the exploits of the hero twins. Here are some intriguing facts that surround the Mayan civilization. 1. The Mayans believed that five different worlds existed, including beings that lived in the underworld. 2. The feathered serpent god, Kukul Khan, came from the heavens and created the earth. 3. The Mayans had developed a rich tradition of hieroglyphic writing, predating the European invaders. Four. Kukul Khan taught mankind about agriculture and prophesied the end of the Mesoamerican civilization. 5. There are literally thousands of pyramids in the Americas alone. I've added a link in the description to archaeologist Dr. Ed Barnhart and his extensive work on the Mayan culture. 
Another Mesoamerican culture that has fascinated the masses is none other than the Paracas culture of Peru. According to Wikipedia, the Paracas culture was an Andean society existing between approximately 800 BCE and 100 BCE, with an extensive knowledge of irrigation and water management that made significant contributions in the textile arts. It was located in what today is the Ica region of Peru. Most information about the lives of the Paracas people comes from excavations at the large seaside Paracas site on the Paracas Peninsula, first formally investigated in the 1920s by Peruvian archaeologist Julio Tello. What the establishment are not talking about are all the elongated skulls that have been found amongst the excavations of Peru, unveiling the Paracas culture in an astonishing light. Brian Forster, a researcher of ancient cultures, has shared some stunning evidence of his findings in Peru. In his books, Elongated Skulls of Peru and Bolivia, The Path of Viracocha, and Beyond the Black Sea, Forster delineates the sutures of these bizarre looking elongated skulls to be out of alignment with that of the standard human skull. And I'll tell you why. Us humans have sutures that bind the various parts of our skull together. They look like jagged lines. They are called the coronal suture, the sagittal suture, and the lambdoid suture. But the astonishing discovery was made revealing the elongated skulls found in the Paracas culture do not have the sagittal sutures. Doctors that have studied these skulls do not have any answer for this anomaly. And according to them, there is no answer to how they could have even been born at all. But that's not the end of the anomalies. These skulls have been DNA tested and measured in which the results yielded an increased brain cavity and a thicker skull, none of which have been found in any other human on planet Earth. Another important fact I want to make clear is a process called head binding. The head binding process was practiced by various cultures around the world, including the people of Peru where they strap wooden boards either side of an infant's head under pressure in order to lengthen the skull to create an elongated head. It's proven that the head binding was practiced amongst the Paracas people. However, the elongated skulls that I previously mentioned, according to the body of very clear evidence, were not the result of head binding. If these skulls were bound, that wouldn't explain the increase of brain cavity volume a bound head would still have the same volume. But why on earth would they bind an infant's head? What would bring an individual to do that to a child? The answer is both simple and chilling. They bound their heads in order to be in the image of their gods. The gods, they say, came from the heavens. Incredible, isn't it? And none of this was taught in our school systems. And none of this information is even really discussed in academia. Hold on for a second, you might say. This is all really new information. No. Well, some of it is. But most of this information is not new at all. These skulls were discovered many, many years ago. And more are showing up. Since we're on the topic of skulls, I want to make you aware of another discovery that was made. Star Child. And no, I'm not referring to the lead singer from the makeup clad rock and roll band KISS. I'm talking about a skull called Star Child that was found in Mexico roughly 800 years ago. And it has 30 different and physical anatomical properties, which technically make it not human. This includes the shape and size of the eye sockets and the lack of a proper nasal system. The composition of the skull is not bone, but that of dental enamel. But of course, academics consider this a freak of nature, a one of a kind anomaly that is not worth discussing or researching, dismissing anything that doesn't fit into their framework of evolution theory. It's all mind boggling, isn't it? And just think, these skulls are from one small part of the world. Imagine other continents like Australia, Europe, Asia, Africa, or even beneath the ice of Antarctica. 
I've left a link in the description to Brian Forster's YouTube page. Let's see if we can tie up some loose ends here. What happened to civilization between the era of Gobekli Tepe 12,000 years ago and the time of the Egyptians and the Sumerians? Did civilization just vanish? Could the dating of these cultures be completely wrong? Or is there truth in a major flood that destroyed civilization nine to 10,000 years ago? See, there are so many holes in their story. And I for one know, as an author, your story must be cohesive or else your entire communication will fail. So why have we reviewed this ancient historical timeline? And how does this aid us in answering the question where we're created? Well, from the information I've presented, which is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to our true past, you can see there is still much speculation about this subject. The scientific establishment still believe civilization started with the ancient Egyptians and Sumerians, and that any group of people before that were merely uncouth hunter-gatherers and before that Neolithic. If this is the case, then how did hunter-gatherers construct and move multiple 10-ton monolithic pillars in eastern Turkey 12,000 years ago? Good research should include information from all sides, including science, philosophy, cultural law and religion. With that said, what does humanity have to lose from the disclosure of our true origins? And in the same breath, what does it have to gain? Here's another question. What do the governing bodies of the world have to lose by disclosing this information? And in turn, what do they have to gain from its secrecy? Profound questions, aren't they? And how we resolve them will lead to how we value ourselves and those around us. One thing is for certain, there seems to be a lot of classification when it comes to our true origins. Who am I? And who are you? How do these questions affect you? What emotions do you feel? What thoughts are triggered? It's okay if this question moves you emotionally, because that's a sure sign you're in the process of discovery, and the ride can get bumpy at times, I assure you. And if these possibilities do not evoke a feeling within you, then that's totally fine too. Either way, what I've presented to you in this episode is worth reviewing and researching, because it seems that we have not been given the full picture of our true origins. If this type of information is sequestered, which basically means isolated and hidden away, then there must be an individual or a group of individuals that have some of the answers or at least a different version of them. How does that make you feel? It doesn't feel right to me. To help you unpack the greatest fiction story known to mankind, please refer to the links I've attached in the description section of this video and begin your journey into the new story that is unfolding before our very eyes. Do you recall me stating, our lives are being directed by the stories we're being told. Used with integrity, these stories can aid us in understanding who we are and where we're headed. Stories that are weaponized can lead to a dark and devastating future. I advise all of you watching right now to use your own discernment and discover your own reality on this subject. The more we unpack the forbidden origins of our past, the more these stories will morph into new connections. And I understand the challenges of letting go of past beliefs, especially when our grand institutions hold so much control and authority in what they want us to know. But I want you to understand something. If we were designed by a higher power or a more advanced group of beings not from this planet or solar system, 
then we realize we are far more special than the random fusion of chemicals and elements science tells us we are. Thank you for watching the third episode of the Forbidden Origin series. I hope this information ignites a fire within you to explore these possibilities. Don't forget to utilize the links in the description to further your research in this compelling subject. I promise to update you on my upcoming sci-fi fantasy story that is in the works. Subscribe to my channel, smash that notifications bell, and let me know what other topics you'd like me to talk about in the comments section. Stay tuned for the next episode in this series as we continue to unpack the greatest fiction story ever told. And together, let us ignite the truth. Yeah.